We are joined now by Dr. Kim Watt. She is a moderator of the AASLD session, Identification and Management of Patients with NAFLD NASH. Those are uh, truly two different challenges, right? The non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. Identification and management, uh, what progress has been made in the identification? Let's start there first. Well, I think it's probably good to understand the history of the, um, the differentiation between both NAFLD and NASH, and it previously used to require a liver biopsy to try to differentiate when you have inflammation within the fatty tissue. Nowadays, um, what's new and what's different and what we'll be updating in this particular symposium is the, the growth of imaging related diagnoses so we don't need to do liver biopsies in every case we have mr elastogram we have transient elastography in various different forms and there's continued progress in trying to differentiate between um, straightforward fatty liver disease and nash so not needing a liver biopsy is obviously non-invasive patients right. prefer this if it's if if you there will be instances where you do need biopsy, but the, the big progress has been on being able to identify um, NASH or fibrosis or scarring um, non-invasively. So that's a, a huge progress. And then what about the management? So management, you know, historically, again, understanding, differentiating between the two, even if you did a biopsy and you would show this person has NASH versus um, this other person that does not, there really wasn't a lot of intervention that you could do other than weight loss, which you would do in both groups, and it is an advantage in both groups. And although weight loss still is the critical key factor in treating NASH, there are other potential treatments. Um, a lot of studies going into almost every large industry, um, small um, programs are also working on NASH, and there's a lot of different treatment options. And right now, most of them are in studies. Mm -hmm. So at least identifying a patient with NASH or somebody with fibrosis or scarring, you could potentially get them into a study. There'll be some treatments coming out in fairly short order, um, meaning months or years, right. <laughs> um, that, that will actually potentially help those patients as well. So I think the differentiation now is important because we will have options and currently right now our options are getting people into studies so that we can continue to make progress in this area. It's, it's a huge area and it needs continued study and ultimately it's gonna end up probably requiring multiple medications on top of obviously the ideal, which is everyone still focusing on weight loss. So in terms of therapeutics for NASH? So in terms of therapeutics, um, right, there's a huge explosion, as I was just saying, in, in studies for actual pills or medications. There's also uh, an equal explosion into surgical weight loss procedures, mm -hmm. so which can be endoscopic nowadays, um, surgical interventions, endoscopic interventions, all for weight loss. So again, weight loss ends up being the key. Um, so it's going to be a multifaceted treatment okay. plan for patients now. And if you could send one message to clinicians about treating NAFLD and NASH, uh, what would that be? I think the change in the coming, in these year, years and the coming years is not to ignore fatty livers. I think a lot of people in the past have kind of just said, oh, you know, there's fat on your ultrasound. But mm -hmm. a lot of people have NASH and a lot of people are at risk of developing progressive scarring and cirrhosis over time and it is becoming the leading indication for transplantation um, in the coming era. And as, you know, we've now curing hepatitis C, so that um, indication is going to go down dramatically, and NASH will be the number one reason for transplant in the coming years. So trying to avoid progression to needing a transplant mm -hmm. is really the key. And actually diagnosing NASH versus just you know fatty liver, you need to investigate that person. And not everybody with normal liver enzymes is just benign fatty liver. There's, there's a lot of people with NASH that have normal liver tests. So you do need to investigate them. You do need to probably do some kind of non-invasive imaging um, to identify that patient with NASH so you can intervene um, ahead of time and try to prevent progression. Okay, very good. Dr. Kim Watt, thank you for Great. joining us. Thank you.